Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains in Missouri, USA. Well, this video is about this Magic Juice Cataclean and if it will really take care of your catalyst efficiency codes on your car. Now, I started having this problem with my truck rather intermittently and it took a little while to track down. Now, of course, the first thing I did, even though it never does any good, is I changed the oxygen sensors. They'd been in there 80,000 miles. They were the originals and they weren't, you know, super expensive. And of course that did absolutely nothing. So uh, generally I wouldn't bother if they seemed to be functioning correctly based on your scan tool. Uh, and it took me quite a while to track down what the problem was. Uh, you know, I was checking YouTube and websites and things like that. And that's where I came across this magic juice. This was like $30 for this little bottle, which is, you know, a quart. Um, so I thought, well, for $30, that's kind of expensive, but I'd give it a try and see what it does. So we've got some video that I shot last year, uh, and then I got kind of balled up with being in the hospital and surgery and blah, 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 blah. So I'm finally getting back to finishing this up to share this information with you. Um, and oh, spoiler alert, uh, this did no good for me. Uh, the much cheaper alternative, which is the same stuff, uh, did no good. Um, and from what I understand from reputable uh, mechanics that are online, like uh, Eric the Car Guy and uh, Scotty Kilmer, that this may do a little good for a little while to get you through an inspection, but it's not a magic bullet. Okay, so what the deal was with my truck, again, spoiler alert, is uh, I was driving from central Missouri to uh, central Ohio, uh, I don't know, six, eight hundred miles, got almost to where I was going and uh, check engine light came on. I had scan tool with me, pulled over, uh, and it was a catalyst efficiency code on bank two, which I thought was kind of weird to have happen because I had been driving, you know, for like eight hours at that point and why pop up then? I thought, well, I just got gas. Maybe it was the gas wasn't the greatest gas in the world. Okay, I reset it. It was fine. I drove from Ohio to Central Florida, um, you know, which is like a thousand miles and, uh, you know, took a couple days and I only had one problem and the rest of the time it was fine. Same thing. It set the code, seemed odd, reset it. It was fine until I just about got back to Missouri, which is another thousand miles. Kind of strange. And finally, it occurred to me that all of these instances where this code was setting was after I had run the engine and it got up to operating temperature and I shut it off for about 10 minutes, started it again, and within a few miles, let's say five miles, the code would pop up. And that was pretty consistent. I was stopping to get gas, I was stopping to run in and grab something real quick from a store, things like that. That's always when it set. You could run it all day and it wouldn't happen. So uh, there's something weird about how the engine computer does the test in that particular situation that made it quite a bit pickier than any other time. Anyhow, we're going to get in to see uh, the captures I did of before adding Cataclean, after adding Cataclean, and um, the final, I won't say fix, the final patch I did, the Band-Aid, uh, to take care of the problem. and. Uh, then we'll talk about what this stuff actually is and if you want to try it, a much, much cheaper alternative. We are in my 2011 Ford Ranger. Uh, as you can see, the money light's on. A little under 74,000 miles on the clock. And the reason is the classic PO420. Um, the catalyst efficiency below limit. This has been on for a while. I haven't worried about it because the, the catalytic converters aren't plugged up. I put spacers in it, which helped. So it's my understanding that if the catalytic converter efficiency falls below 94 or 95%, this pops up, which seems silly to me. Uh, imagine if your tires wore down 5% and you had to replace your tires. That doesn't make any sense. Um, anyhow, a video about this magic goop popped up on YouTube and I watched a few of them and some of them weren't uh, let's say altogether scientific 
Um, and it was it was kind of expensive. It was about thirty dollars for this little bottle, but I bought it. And you know, it's supposed to clean out your catalytic converter. And the idea is that you add it into a quarter full or approximately four gallon fuel tank, drive normally for ten to fifteen minutes, then refuel. And you know, when I read those directions, I'm thinking, what what does adding it to a quarter tank do, and then driving for fifteen minutes? It's not going to pull very much at all uh, into the engine during that time. You know, you've got maybe a tenth or two tenths of a gallon in your fuel lines and filters and everything running up to the engine. It's just not going to do much. But I thought we'd give it a try. I also did some research and I found out exactly what's in this stuff, which might surprise you. So uh, first thing we'll do is look at the output of the oxygen sensors and uh, then I'll dump some of this in the tank. I'll dump this whole bottle in the tank and I'll do the 15 mile drive, fill it up full of gas, and uh, we'll see what happens right after that. And I'll drive it for about a week and we'll see if it's any different. Okay, pointing the camera at the screen is not the best way to do this. And unfortunately on this Xtool D8, I cannot scale these uh, graphs properly. Uh, but you can see that bank one, sensor one, bank two, sensor one, both look as they should. And if we look at sensor two, which is the one that measures catalyst efficiency, uh, bank two, sensor two is uh, about where it should be, around eight tenths of a volt, whereas sensor one is fluctuating around. You know, without the spacer in there, uh, sensor two is doing the same thing. So um, I'll dump the magic juice in the tank and uh, and we'll see what it does. Okay, I've driven the 15 miles and so here is bank one, sensor one, bank one, sensor two. And perhaps sensor two has less lumps in it. Uh, Bank 2 sensor 2 is still flat like it should be. You can see even when you floor it, the, the uh, bank 2 sensor 2 also goes low. So perhaps this magic juice has done something. Um, of course, the Check engine light still on because we're going to have to reset it. Um, and the low gas light come on. So I'm going to go get some gas. And um, when I get home, I'll reset the check engine light just for fun. And uh, we'll finish this video at the end of the week after I put a few more miles on it. And we'll see what this stuff did. Well, it's been about 200 and. 60 or 70 miles with the magic juice and the last 50 uh, is a fresh tank of gas. The check engine light did come back on about 60 miles after I put the stuff in. I just reset it just now so we'll see what happens in a few days if it comes back on. Uh, you can see that uh, bank one sensor two is still fluctuating somewhat. Uh, or bank one sensor two is fluctuating. Bank two sensor two is flat, which is what it should be. Let's see, they both go low. When you give it some gas and it goes out of uh, closed loop. So perhaps uh, Cataclean has done something. I'll have to go back and compare this to the pictures uh, before we started and see if it kicks the check engine light back on now after going through the full ticket gas. We are about a year after trying Cataclean. Uh, had about 73, 74,000 miles on it then. Close to 80 now. 
Um, and uh, the next thing I did after Cataclean didn't work was try uh, the same thing in a different bottle. That's much cheaper, which we'll discuss uh, coming up next. And that also made no difference. Uh, so then, kind of did the redneck fix. Um, I added a second short defouler spacer to the O2 sensor. This is one of the old O2 sensors. Um, this is sold as a spark plug defouler. It's got a small opening here. You drill that out to about half an inch. Um, that screws into the catalytic converter. O2 sensor screws into that. That brings the sensor up out of the, the, the gas stream in the catalytic converter. You get more of an average reading. Not so many spikes. And we can see the difference here. But we can see that uh, everything is working fine as far as the computer is concerned. No, this is not a fix. It's a patch or a clutch, but uh, it does get it working and it gets you more life out of the catalytic converters rather than wasting money replacing them before they actually need to be replaced. Okay, we're back. Um, as you saw, uh, this catalytic clean stuff uh, did absolutely no good for me. I have no doubt it may briefly help in some situations, you know, get you through an inspection. Um, after learning that some vehicles will pop up the catalyst efficiency code if you're still, you know, 90 plus per, uh, percent efficient on the catalyst. Uh, seemed kind of silly to me. That's like wearing down your tires 10% and replacing your tires. Doesn't make any sense. That's not uh, economical and it's not ecological to throw away something that's still perfectly good, you know, just because. So uh, what I did, and this is a top tip if you're ever wondering what's in something, is I look for the MSDS sheet for this stuff. Uh, that's what it's called in the US. It may be called diff uh, different things in different countries. But basically, it is a list of chemicals that are in a product, you know, to tell you how dangerous they are, that type of thing. And it's required by law for, you know, most things like that. Um, and I looked at what was in it, and it's like, well, that doesn't seem like anything, you know, super fantastic or unusual. And, uh, and I remembered something I heard on another video from Scotty Kilmer, and he suggested lacquer thinner, which I thought was rather silly at the time. So uh, I looked up the MSDS sheet for this brand of lacquer thinner, which I got at my local hardware store. And lo and behold, it is exactly the same thing as this. And I'll pop up the data sheets here for you so you can peruse those. You can hit the pause and take a look at them. Um, so I said, well, okay. So then I put, you know, half a gallon of this in my tank instead of, you know, the quart of the Cataclean and it made no difference, of course. And the thing is that this one gallon bottle, which is four liters basically, uh, was one half the price of this one quart or one liter bottle of Cataclean. So if you want to try it, uh, get yourself some lacquer thinner, check the MSDS sheet for the particular brand that you're getting in places like California or New York, they tend to have weird rules and uh, large quantities of chemicals, say anything over a quart or a pint might be a different formulation than smaller quantities. So keep that in mind. But anyhow, if you want to try it, save yourself some money, uh, get the lacquer thinner, try that, it may do you good temporarily, but it won't. Now, admittedly, the, the spacers I put in there, the drilled out defoulers are a clutch. Um, it didn't really fix anything. It kind of masked the problem. It gave us an average reading rather than getting the peaks on those. But like I said, if that uh, catalytic converter is still operating at 70% efficiency and it'll last another four years, and you've got much better life out of those materials and that manufacturing process and all the energy and uh, rare minerals that went into making that rather than saying oh it's only 90 percent so we need to throw it away that doesn't make any sense uh, some people say well i don't worry about the light being on but if 
the check engine light is on for something uh, silly like catalyst efficiency, then you don't know if it's coming on for something more important that you need to look at right away. So uh, at any rate, that's, like I said, it's a clutch, it's a patch. It shuts the light off. Uh, that type of stuff isn't inspected here where I'm at, so it doesn't really make any difference. And, you know, eventually in a few years, I'll probably have to replace the catalytic converters anyhow with right at 80,000 miles on the truck. I don't expect to have to do that for, you know, four plus years. Uh, anyhow, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, questions or comments, leave them in that comment section down there below. Would love to hear from you. And hopefully it's not another year until I post a new video. Bye.